Hi, I'm Cheryl Waters. Thanks so much for joining us live on KEXP at Home. I am beyond excited to be talking with the Lounge Society right now. They recorded some wonderful songs for us to share. I'm loving everything I've heard from you so far, and it's so exciting to be here with you now. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks how are you? for having us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing great. And uh, can you introduce all yourselves to our listeners? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, so I'm Herbie. I play guitar and bass. Yeah, I'm Hanny. play guitar and bass. Uh, I'm Archie. I play tubs. <laughs> I'm Cam. I'm vocals, guitar and bass. <laughs> I'm curious to learn about the origin story of your band. You were all schoolmates, as I understand it. What was the catalyst to start recording and performing together? Um, probably boredom first and foremost I mean um, and that and a sort of love of uh, music really and it was sort of uh, something to do um, and, and like it was all we sort of uh, were any good at at I the time I think it so. was also that it was like uh, our, like where we lived we were, felt like the only people our age that were doing a similar interest yeah, to what we were yeah. doing so it was like we all just kind of were going to come together at some point and it happened at that time and yeah just Boredom. Like we just we were mates, but like mates that wanted to do something together, which I think yeah. is the yeah. best I think type of. Felt like we were the only people who were into kind of, I guess guitar and music. I mean, it's kind yeah. of evolved from that now. But at the time, at school and stuff, that's what that's what it was. And everyone else was into the sort of charts and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And we were bonded over that, and then yeah. started playing each other music, and that's it was like a hobby for yeah, us. We just kept on influencing each other, aren't we? Mm. Just you know, mm. someone finds something new, we share that with each other, and it just all kind of morphs together into yeah. whatever the lounge site does at yeah. that present time. That's it, and that's all we do now. I mean, we're still yeah. doing yeah, that. Exactly. That's why I sort of I think evolved. that's like, and back then because of where we live, it's like it would only be each other that we could find things from out of our little country town um, in <laughs> yeah. terms of music yeah, yeah. Uh, with us but and, and everything. Uh, we could just explore that together. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Describe your little country town. What's it like where you live? Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's got something that's down yeah. it's, yeah. uh, it's, It rains a lot, I mean. Um, it's but there's, lovely at the moment. Yeah. Apart from yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah today. we're swimming today. It's been boiling, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's got a sort of sense of community, I guess, and um, usually. Yeah. And, um, uh, but it's like any small town, really, I, I guess. And that sense, it does feel a little isolated from the rest of the world, for better or for worse. Um, yeah. But, uh, it's also a bit of a tourist attraction, which can be quite frustrating for us, I guess. And lots of people yeah. live here because, you know, on a sunny day like today, mm. it's a really nice place. But on a really bleak winter's day, it's, yeah. you know, it can be, like, like most towns, like I was saying, it can be... Yeah, I mean it's it's Valley Bomb yeah. but even on the like geographical level, like when when it feels shit, like you feel shit and trapped. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a supportive music community there? Other <laughs> bands to play with? Music venues? Record stores? People that come out to shows? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's really um, alive and well. The sort of music. Um, Appetite. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a bit. Of, it's a bit of an anomaly, isn't it? Because mm. um, for such a strange little place in the middle of nowhere, you know, you've got um, we've got the trades club, obviously, and and the Golden Line just down the road in Todd, um, and I, all these places have been really supportive and helping us to get to where we are now. And you know, we saw bands like the Orioles, you know, um, quite a long time ago. Yeah. Um, at the trades club and I think that was probably really Years inspiring out, for us yeah. and kind yeah. of really brought us together yeah. mm. I mean having venues to let us let sort of unknown bands play is all those yeah. important things all those independent venues across the country and the world are sort of crucial yeah. it's important we keep them alive <laughs> yeah I know and our heart goes out to our venues right now. I'm hoping that they bounce back and people are so excited to get out and see live shows again. We appreciate you so much recording these videos for KEXP. Let's listen to a couple of those now. It's songs from your new EP, Silk for the Starving. It's the Lounge Society live on KEXP at home.
That's the Lounge Society live on KEXP at home. I love that pink room that you're in. It looks like a tiny venue or a little auditorium. Where are you there? Yes, in Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. The pink room, in, yeah. yes, as a matter of fact. That's the name, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it was like that was again a blistering day, like yeah, incredibly yeah. hot um, in a pink room. I, f- I thought, yeah, like it really offsets our sound. Yeah, like incredibly yeah. like pink and bright and bubbly. <laughs> it got pretty intense um, in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that was kind of yeah the opposites of the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. Well, I absolutely loved the EP "Silk for the Starving," and also loved when Generation Game came out. Right out of the gates, I fell in love with your sound. And your discovery by Speedy Wonderground is a real testament to that wonderful sound. I heard that Dan Carey produced your first song and also your EP and released it on Speedy Wonderground. And he's, of course, a favorite here at KEXP through his work with Fontaine's DC, Goat Girl, K Tempest, Squid, Emiliana Torini. I could just keep going on and on here. But I read that it was always a dream of yours to work with Dan, and it certainly feels like a natural home for you and sounds a bit like you have a similar ethos. Can you describe the moment when you first got in contact with him or and, and, and that he got in contact with you? Uh, yeah, well, I think um, it was uh, in the morning, and I sort of we all sort of in our separate houses woke up to the news that um, he was up for working with us, and uh, suddenly we were all on the phone to each <laughs> other. Um, it was um, Wait, that that right? was a hell of a day, actually. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, but it, like leading up to that, it seemed to be almost every record we listened to that we liked, you know, had a particular was, style of artwork, yeah, yeah, and it seemed to yeah. be like um, almost inevitable that we'd mm-hmm. want to. Mm. seek them out and then the moment yeah. that they um, wanted to work with us was, was quite something. It became a very sort of quick goal that as soon as we kind of became a bit obsessed yeah. with the label, like Henry was saying, that every single day release became our new favourite song. Yeah, yeah. They, they had they just instantly gave off that sort of cult following. Like the, mm. it, 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 if you listen to Speedy Wonder and you just listen to everything and yeah, yeah um, at, at that point. Yeah. Was it, I think it was Dis- Divine Intervention, PVA, the, just before us that had come out. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. and, and I think that was, it, it, did it come out either before or after we got the news we were going to be working with Dan? Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember hearing that when yeah. it came out, I think, oh my God, we, we are going to be working be, with yeah. this guy. <laughs> you know, I yeah. think it was perfect yeah. in the end. Absolutely. And in terms of the ethos, like the uh, the idea that there's no messing around, I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of what we, we try to do, just sort of get down to business, keep it honest. It was instantly something that just we realised when we got down there to do Generation Game. That was like, because um, I don't think we'd actually taken that approach, say the like three takes. Mm. We hadn't done that, but it felt like, why hadn't we always done this? Like, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll continue to do this, whatever we do in the future. But yeah, absolutely. It, it just became, makes sense. It became very, queer, very clear very quickly when we were in the studio with Dan doing Generation Game. We kind of, I think we kind of looked at each other and knew that it was right because yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, we tried recording that before and demoing stuff in general mm. and it was fine but it kind of was lacking that live mm. feel and that, Dan just knows how to get yeah. that perfectly yeah. I don't know if yeah. anyone else in the world yeah. could have done that really Actually, and Generation Game was done in, in one take and yeah. so essentially five minutes and 30 seconds in that studio I mean we uh, yeah. our, you know yeah. whole sound had been de- determined <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget when we said yeah. Dan said we're done and we were like oh yeah. what do you mean like yeah, just have a break and he's like, yeah. no, 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 we're done we're done it yeah. it would usually <laughs> take longer to set up the lights in the smoke machine yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely the song. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, Speedy Wonderground is aptly named. I mean, from what I've heard, they have a very clear game plan, and it is to work fast and uh, get live takes and build that energy. And with Dan, you certainly captured a great live energy on the recordings. How did you specifically work in collaborating? Was he sort of putting his fingerprints all over? How much room did he give you to spread your wings? I think he, he, he kind of, he definitely leaves his mark on it, but it's not in an overpowering way. He doesn't come in yeah. and take control and, and to turn you yeah. into what he wants. It, if anything, it, I think he's just very good at capturing it the way it should be captured. Yeah. You know, he, he'll he, he draws something. it out of yeah. you. Yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. start with something like an additive or even, yeah, whatever. And sometimes he will do that without saying, but... It will always be like he overly like checks with us, yeah. like whatever he does. It, because sometimes he'll feel like in his head, it's like I I've heard this in my head. This needs to go straight on right yeah. now. I'll do it, and then and then I'll like see if it actually sounds good. Because 
he just values everyone else's opinion as much as his, which yeah. is like so rare. Yeah. It feels like when we're in the studio with him, any sort of like additive that he suggests or start doing, even if we don't maybe know where it's going, yeah. we have a yeah. trust of him. And then like, yeah, we just it, go, it, it's always yeah. a, a huge sort of impact yeah. on the track. It, you know, he's never just like, yeah. even if it's really subtle in the mix or whatever, it, mm. it always feels like the final mix would be entered without the, that mm. particular thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not too impactful. Yeah. It doesn't take over the track. And he does. He does give us a sort of incredible freedom. Like I remember being outside the studio. We were talking about ideas, and he was going, "Well, remember, you know, it's just music. Nobody dies." <laughs> yeah, and it's like yeah, you know, that is a good that. point. Like, why not have a bit of fun with it? Why not do something weird and, yeah. and just see what happens? Yeah. <laughs> And do you do one song in a day? I I kind of get the idea that he doesn't like things to be too overwrought. No, no yeah, well, the EP and um, he likes takes would in. No lunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. absolutely, yeah. yeah. That was hard. I, I think we actually yeah. broke that rule the last yeah. time we went yeah. down. There, we, we can. there was an incident, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, excessive amounts of time spent in Subway. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, we did like I was saying the for the EP, all the live takes were done the first day within a matter of like an hour or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. hours. Uh, you know, we spent a bit of time getting the sound right, and that's that's yeah. one of the things that he is so great about Dan that yeah. he we spend a lot of time getting the perfect tone. It, it, and it, yeah. feel he gets and it right in the room, doesn't yeah. he? And the rest is up to us. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. almost mixed before it goes onto the tape. Mm, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and I yeah. say, uh, then it's just down to us. Yeah. Yeah. If it sounds great for us in the room, then that's a great start. It's a great yeah. sign because, yeah. you know, it's like a yeah. gig. You know, it, it feels energy. great. Yeah. Yeah. It, it impacts yeah. the performance. Mm. Like a, a full crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It does. It, that's yeah. thing. It always feels a bit like a gig in the room, yeah. in a studio, yeah. which is perfect for us. Was this your first recording experience? Because it's a pretty great first start. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I mean, we yeah, did a, a few demos and things. Yeah, but, but it um, wasn't the same. No, no it was uh, the first sort of real life. Yeah, so thrown in at the deep end. Mm. But um, I think that was good for us, really. Yeah. 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 Um, We've got ourselves in a position now where we can't imagine recording with anyone else. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I guess the, yeah. First, the first time we went down and did Generation Game, it did seem... Yeah. yeah, it seemed, seemed a little bit nervy, didn't it? And yeah. then, you know, the more we've worked with him, the, you know, it's just natural yeah. in the studio now. Yeah. Now, whenever we, we write a song, we have sort of two images in mind, and that is the stage and the crowd and dance and the studio. <laughs> yeah. And, and th those are the only things we think about when writing a song. You know, yeah. how will this sound in front of an audience and how will this sound in front of uh, Dan and Alexis? And that is yeah. sort of all we need to worry about. And yeah. Now, now yeah. that we have gigs coming back, like it's just great because we, we have to give all our new songs as much time at a gig live to be it's on, yeah road tested mm. as possible because that's where they're meant to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, you've mentioned in an interview that a song isn't complete for you until you play it live, and you must really be missing that live energy of an audience. What does the audience add to the track that would otherwise be missing? I think it's the, the feeling. I yeah. mean, like, it's, it's often subconscious, I think, but in a yeah. room, I mean, even like... We haven't had a non-socially distanced gig yet. We, we do soon, but even yeah, then, it's, we week, have yeah. been able to yeah. get that from tracks. So, yeah. Mm. But I think in, and with the audience, it's definitely not all one way because, you know, it's not just a matter of we're playing a show and they're listening. You know, it's been like that with some of the more social distance ones. Though. But, uh, you know, pre-COVID, a uh, proper gig, yeah. you know, it's completely two ways, you know, and you can actually probably so be a little noise. bit lazier with yeah, it yeah. because all it is is you're feeding the audience and the audience are throwing it back at you and you're just dancing together. That's I think pretty it's, much it's it. Not, it's, not, it's not a case with the audience, it's not a case of them saying that was good or that was bad. It's yeah. how we react to it, I think, you know, mm. react to the audience and it is subconscious, yeah. You know, but it says a lot. Often when you look back at a gig, I think, and you think, oh, you know, when we, when you did that or you did that and like, that worked really well and you don't even know you've done it, but yeah. they're one of those sort of yeah. beautiful things, I think. Yeah. Well, you have such a great groove. If you can get the audience dancing from start to finish, you know you've done a great job. <laughs> the only A. That and to get the words through. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Your second single, Burn the Heather, which was the first song that we just watched, ruffled some feathers, uh, pun intended, of some of the landowners in Yorkshire when it was released. And you've stated that you reveled in that. What message were you hoping to convey in that song? Stop shooting birds for sport. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, like... Um, Simple yeah, as that. Really, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we intended to sort of um, to create a discussion with that yeah. song because mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, we, we obviously we know we're not going to just change anyone's opinion yeah. over three minutes of, of music, but we if we can get people talking, yeah. that is enough. Yeah. And discussion was the key point because, like, even in the comments on the on the music video, mm-hmm. that was that would be the aim. And I think there is some, like, people putting in a lot of information on both sides, obviously, but that's great. But there has been, obviously, a lot of mindlessly just... Shouting, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much <laughs> it's quite funny. wrong, yeah. Which but, is also good because, like, anger um, is it, like we can just laugh at that because it's like it clearly it's got a reaction, and we all we want is a reaction. Yeah, yeah people, absolutely. Good and or bad. The, the comments on the video where they were saying we were using the wrong guns, even though we were using <laughs> plastic guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, so not, that's not the model we use to shoot guns. Yeah. 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 Not missing the point. One could argue those would be the right guns. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it felt it felt good um, to be uh, part of a, a real conversation. You know, not just sort of um, a hedonistic music thing where it's sort mm. of inward looking. Like it was, yeah. it was something that you know. Obviously, we know we're not going to change anything overnight. But for something that actually mattered, that felt quite refreshing. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. We want to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Mm. we will. <laughs> Well, I love the song because it has a powerful message, but also the music has such a great groove. It's got such a great uh, bass line going through there, and uh, it's very infectious. Let's watch a couple (laughs) more songs um, that you've recorded exclusively for KEXP, and you've mixed up uh, the instrumentation a little bit on this. Cam, move into guitar. We've got Kane's Heresy and Valley Bottom Fever. It's the Lounge Society live on KEXP at home. Enjoy.
That's the Lounge Society live on KEXP at home. And I'm loving those videos. I'm aching to get back out and see live music. I appreciate you doing those for us. It's been so wonderful to still be able to talk to bands and enjoy live music. I know it's not the same virtually, but we appreciate your time. And music can be such a force for change. And can you talk, we were talking about this a little bit before we played those videos, but can you talk a little bit more about how important it is the band is it is for the band to make an impact with your music? Yeah, I mean, we've like, it's even just to talk about talking about it mm -hmm. is like, it's it's just crazy not to um, with any mm -hmm. with any band. Like mm -hmm. it, to think that whatever sort of angle or background you come from makes a difference to how like valued or how much you need to say something yeah. is like that doesn't matter. You, the, the need is always at maximum. Um, yeah. I think I think I think if if a band or an artist or anyone can get the combination of the words and the music or the feel mm -hmm. being as impactful as possible, then you've got something good. And I think that's that's been our aim, you know, to to write a really good track, you know, or whatever, yeah, which yeah. you know, which people can dance to and people can feel, but also to write some words which to really say mm -hmm. something and people can maybe relate to yeah. or maybe make them think and. Yeah. You know, with like, but well, with all our tracks, you know, yeah, yeah. Burn the Heaven maybe been a bit more obvious, and I guess Television. Generation Game, yeah, yeah. But actually, yeah, all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I think it's I think it's good to um, the way we we really try and have something specific um, to build a song from when, yeah. when we talk about you know like subjects and things, whether that be I don't know the the media, fashion, killing birds for sport, um, you know, mm. small town life. Like I think th there seems to be a trend towards. Unfortunately, in, in some areas of, of music, people not really wanting to have anything specific to yeah. talk about, maybe for fear of upsetting someone or b being upset, you know, and we, I just easy don't... Option. Yeah, it is. It's a, mm. That's an easy way out. And obviously, like we said, we were open for criticism for, for yeah. what we said, yeah. but yeah. I think, um, yeah, you know, long may that continue, that's fine. And also, in terms of writing, did, mm. writing from a more specific place is so much more interesting and fun. Mm. Well, yeah, fun and, like... Challenging as well. It's like um, it feels like you're just covering something that needs to be covered, mm -hmm. more than just talking about a sort of overarching thing. And then people are gonna go in and ask you, "What are you really talking yeah, about?" Yeah. You're just sort of glazing over something. Mm. What's your actual opinion? And people yeah. need to actually say their opinion, mm. obviously. It's great to start that dialogue through music, and it's good that you're open to hear what people say, and hopefully, you know, we'll start some conversations with this. Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 The UK has been a contentious topic in music news for some time now around how Brexit will impact young bands such as yourself on European tours. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience has been like planning to tour the EU? Yeah, we're just probably not going to be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we it, want to get yeah. a lot yeah. of forms. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think the thing is, it's it is it's still doable, but it's so difficult to do. Mm. They have just made it impossible. Yeah, as hard as possible. You, you know, I I think hopefully we will be able to get there and do it because we'd all love to do it. Yeah, mm. that's part of every young musician in the UK's dreams to be able to go and tour yeah, Europe, yeah. go and tour America, um, and. It used to be so much easier, and now we're going to have to, you know, write out so many lists, fill out so many forms, pay so much money, yeah. you know, just to maybe even break even if we do do it. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. It, it, it is nice that like um, some festivals, like the, I mean, we don't even know if we'll be able to do them, but in Europe, mm. um, they provide a great amount of money just for us to be able to go over, yeah, and obviously, yeah, it's yeah. insane that it would take that much for us to go to places, mm. but. It's so generous and like, I mean, yeah, festivals and venues is like it, they're in need of the money as much. As, yeah, as absolutely. Like, yeah. It, it, all sectors are so. Yeah. The fact that they're the ones giving and being generous is just so. Yeah, it's crazy. I, th I think touring in places like Europe for a young band from wherever is mm. like has been so difficult before Brexit. Yeah. You know, like bands, you, you don't really make money until you hit a certain level of tour. Never mind mm. having to go to different you know going to europe yeah. and now it's just been made 10 times harder yeah. and you know for band like us you know no money and with that kind of money anyway yeah. you know it's like it just and makes it, things very difficult. it's just been completely overlooked as well i mean 
don't get me wrong, I might be a few days behind, but from what I've seen, they don't seem to be doing a thing about it. They're aware of how much, how important this is as part of our industry, mm. and just no one seems to do anything about it. Yeah. Well, our government don't care about the arts industry. Yeah. No, not no, not that's not, and that's a, that's the problem because a lot of these European countries do. Mm. Yeah, and you know we've had really good offers for a few festivals exactly, and yeah. things where they've been yeah. really supportive. They've offered to pay for loads. Yeah. And it's it's just shocking that we probably can't do it. Yeah, so, well, and I'm um, upset that life's going to be more difficult for European artists coming here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, I think we like, lost that. We, we we as as listeners and um, as as just people in the UK, like um, or even aspiring musicians, seeing bands coming from other places. That's how you learn mm -hmm. because they're inevitably going to be different. And we're sort of we seem to have as a nation deliberately sabotaged our own cultural experience. Yeah, yeah. We're now trying to be more inward looking. It's like. Um, and it's going to make things more difficult for us. Like, obviously, I know they're big enough to travel wherever they like, but we're influenced a little bit by Stereo Lab. And, you know, for, for a band like that to have a harder time coming over here, that is going yeah, to make that's... bands like us worse, potentially, you know, like yeah. not being able to have access to that kind of uh, music. It's, yeah. um, it's a shame. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, art is so crucial and it's something that we all need so much. And it's in infuriating and painful to see so many roadblocks thrown up and with all these fees. I mean, we'd, I'd like to see you not only, you know, more than break even, but be able to make a living at this, you know, and have this be your craft and go somewhere and just to see all these roadblocks is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really difficult. Um, <laughs> I think one of the, like, for us just to, just to kind of like, Keep on going and sort yeah. of like just keep making songs. We'll yeah. keep doing it. It's our yeah. lives. Yeah. Either way, we keep doing it. But mm. obviously, to keep doing it, it would be helpful to have money. <laughs> it'd be, it'd yeah. be nice if we could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the <laughs> yeah. Well, well on, on a brighter note, your seven-inch release of Generation Game was the fastest-selling release for Speedy Wonderground, mm -hmm. and you've made huge waves with your debut EP, Silk for the Starving. You're now on this precipice as international touring slowly starts to open up again, and, mm -hmm. you know, as hard as they are making it for you, is there anticipation for what comes next as a band? Are there people around you that are helping you make good decisions? Yeah, absolutely. We we have um, some really helpful people we work with. I mean, the Speedy, like Pierre, Dan, Alexis, they're all brilliant. Our manager, Pierre, and his yeah, ace. Yeah. Um, Liam, you know, agent. Liam, yeah. yeah. Every, everyone pitches in uh, together and it, it's, it's really great. And I mean, that's, you know, the sort of beautiful thing about this industry, I guess. We all know we're sort of under attack, so we're really trying yeah. to work hard yeah. and, and then keep the whole thing afloat. But I think, yeah, the, you know, the, the future is, is exciting. Um, you know, we plan to be, go to every country in the world, make, mm -hmm. make some good records. And know? the fact that nothing is definite in this cli in yeah, the climate of our scene or the whole of the UK. And like, that's what makes it even more exciting. It's like, mm -hmm. we, we've, we've got this and it's like, the percentage that it's actually going to happen, happen is decreased for all bands. For, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so that, that is more. It also makes us feel quite... Look, I mean, we know that we've put everything yeah, into yeah. this band, so yeah, like, you know, it, more. you know, I yeah. guess you know, feel like it kind of deserve it. But also, you know, we've seen loads of bands not be able to be on KXP, for example, yeah. you know, and like it does make you feel really lucky to yeah. have this opportunity. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know, it can be taken away from you like that. Yeah. So we're we're just trying to have as much fun with it as possible. Then, like, yeah. yeah. I'll keep on going. Well, I'm happy to hear that you're enjoying the process and the journey. And I still remember the day I heard Generation Game for the first time and was so excited <laughs> and couldn't wait to hear more. Let's listen to that. You've recorded that for us. It was your single that came out last year, the first song. Was that the first song that you released? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ever. Great. Well, let's watch that now. The Lounge Society is live on KEXP at home.
down the barrel of a gun Then you won't ever find them On the cover of the sun I want to hear you feel it It's going in the skull But it's okay Cause it's not on the news It's all on the front of the table We don't hear about sin In our happy, happy house Who cares anyway As long as we're okay It's a little bit sensitive That's Generation Game Live on KEXP at Home. You're listening to the Lounge Society. These videos are so great. They're just so dynamic. I cannot wait to be in the same room as you when you play live one day. Soon, I hope. Yeah. Um, get on yeah. over here to the U.S. You have to be so ready for live shows right now. 
Oh my yes. god, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two days. Yeah. It's our first yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first non socially distanced. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I kind of wish I had talked to you after that. I can't wait to hear how that goes. <laughs> Your songs just seem to morph and grow from release to release, and they're all just a little bit different. Is the plan to keep surprising your fans? Definitely. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. <laughs> that's like the main aim. And surprising yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's come, I think that just stems from, as we was mentioning before, like we feel a need to sort of show each other and just explore all sort of weird parts of music, especially, yeah. but all sort of arts and culture. And so, like, it would be crazy not to do that on our own music and be yeah. like, this is some weird angle, like, let's try this. And then it always seems when we start a track, like, however it starts, that by the end it's like, this is the Lounge Society, yeah. and we don't really know why it is, but it yeah. just happened as <laughs> yeah. we started jamming it together. And, and I, I guess, you know, I think for all of us, if anyone were to say to you point blank, what's your favourite genre? We couldn't in a million years name you one because we do. We constantly had going into different things and learning about different yeah. time periods mm -hmm. and different, you know, every different scene that's ever happened because it's all so exciting yeah. and that and that all comes together yeah. and in some weird way in in the band and that I guess that's why everything we put out tends to be different to the last. Yeah. It's like the question, what what does your band sound like? Is the most difficult question. Yeah. To answer. <laughs> yeah. It's just a <laughs> question you don't want to be asked. No. Yeah. <laughs> Fair question, but it's very yeah. difficult to answer. <laughs> I just said, just go listen to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I love listening to it, and I've really loved talking with you today. I, as I said, I can't wait to see you perform live. I'm eager to follow your journey. I'm so happy to have discovered you at this juncture, and uh, I'm happy so much also to hear how much fun you're having with it, and you clearly enjoy doing this and one another. Mm. Yeah. Mm, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. so much for having us. And we'll be in America as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd love okay. to come over and we'll be watching. Yeah. We'll be watching out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you again so much. You've been listening to the Lounge Society live on KEXP at home. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.